is doing some great things and we are getting you ready for the end time move of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Amashke. Father, thank you for the outpouring of Holy Spirit. Thank you for the era of Holy Spirit. Thank you that we are here now in the era of Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. Activate our, our minds with witty ideas. Activate our minds with witty ideas. Activate our minds with innovative concepts. Activate our minds with a willingness, a willingness to be in this revival, to, to participate in significant ways in the Missio Day, in your mission, oh God. And we thank you. We thank you for every opportunity, every open door in the name of of Jesus. Fire us up. Refire us, Holy Spirit. Revive us and refire us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Woo! Glory to God. Activate our minds with witty ideas and innovative concepts. God, you are doing something different. Good morning, your grace. God bless you, Bishop Frazier. Hallelujah, Janice Roberts, Apostle. God bless you. This is Pentecost. This is Pentecost. This is Pentecost. In these mountains, Pentecost. Activate our minds. Activate our minds. Ekanama shota. Oh, shaky shikaba. Oh, God, get on my CI. Oh, Pastor Hillary, I'm telling you, Elder, I'm taking you all over this thing. I'm not going to let you out of it, Hillary. I promise you, you and your husband will be significant in this. God cut not the tangerine, you and your husband. Come on, Jade. Come on, come on. Get used to different. Yes, Jade. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Camp meeting 2022. Thank you, Dr. Dekeeper. Thank you, Dr. Aqua. Thank you. Let's go. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. God, give me witty ideas and give me innovative concepts for this outpouring. Activate our minds, activate our thought life, activate our creativity, activate our skill sets, activate our giftings. Oh God, the Damascus. This is Pentecost, folks. This is what Pentecost was about. <laughs> Whoa, they went out. They cut from the upper room. They didn't sit in the upper room and keep going back. They didn't keep going back every day, every day and expect the same experience. When they left that upper room, they turned the world upside down. <laughs> you have not received the Holy Ghost just for you to be in church. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Running up and down the aisle, tag five people. No, no, no. You have been baptized in Holy Spirit so that your giftings, your ideas can move you into the space of culture. <sighs> Spirit of the Lord said something to me, and I'm, I, I want to talk a little bit about this. How in the era of Holy Spirit, how in this era of Holy Spirit, we are to operate. And when he gave me this, I'm here now. I, I really didn't understand it. I just liked it. Uh, praise God. We started it in Florida. And uh, the evangelists, we were talking, and I said, well, we're here now. 
and Nick didn't know that the Holy Spirit was setting up something. Come on, Victoria Thomas. Yes, yes, Erica Maddox. Activate our minds. Some of you have been in a place uh, where you're, you haven't had to use your mind. Ah, glory to God. You've been in such a, 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 a law that you have not had to use your minds. Uh, you have been robotic and you've been repetitive, but you have not had to use your mind. Okay, come on, Nioshe. I need you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And so you have not been created. You've not been witty. You've not had ideas. You've not felt the 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 push or the urgency to um to even have, uh, if you would, a new idea or a new plan or a, a new presentation. I'm speaking to the class this morning and you have not had to use your minds. Glory to God. Woo. So your minds have not been active. You've been, your mind has been in a passive condition. And under the old shake up, and it's kind of like you've been going in a, a a a circle. It's not even a circle; it's almost a square. And you just kind of do what you do. Work is normal. Church is normal. Life is normal. Relationships are normal. Everything is at this space of normal. You've just simply, John, you've been robotic, and the people have been repetitive. You're not really thinking you're really thinking because you haven't been in a season ah, to use your mind this is the spirit of the lord speaking to us yes uh yes 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 uh overseer says uh we have been in autopilot on autopilot come on evelyn johnson yes you've been stuck in old paradigms and cycles and so your imaginations are 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 not in use. Praise God. Come on, chaplain. Activate our imagination with witty ideas. Hallelujah. Innovative kingdom solutions. And then childlike faith to believe whatever Holy Spirit says you can do. You run to do it without hesitation. Good God Almighty. <laughs> And so problems have not been solved. Uh, uh, they've just been kind of passed over. Uh, and yes, uh, uh, <laughs> stuck like Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and you, I just hear the Holy Spirit say, you have not had to use your mind for the last two years. You've not had to use your mind. Everything is robotic. You've been doing church, whether you're doing it at home. You brought some of you brought your your uh, 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 lectures to your house, and you brought your mics and you brought your keyboards. You didn't do anything different. You just did it from a different location. Come on, Tyrone Warner. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. And, and you haven't done anything with your mind. Your mind, and I know you've been doing things, but Holy Spirit says you haven't had to use your mind. And so many of you uh, that are in leadership, you know, we, you just kind of did what, the people think you should do. And so you've been, you've just been, been just operating out of the known. You've been operating out of the familiar. You've been operating out of the normal, the regular. <laughs> you, if you, the kids say regular, you've just been regular. And the last two years, Holy Spirit said the last two years, you have not conceived anything fresh mm, my god and many times in order for there to be 
a, a, a innovative idea or a, a you got in order for you to reach for something different, a problem has to be presented. Hmm. I hear your Holy Spirit. I hear your Holy Spirit. And I'm a Sia. And we are entrenched in what we know. We are entrenched in what we believe. We're entrenched in what it is that we are used to. And many times in order <laughs> for you to reach in your mind, reach for something, there has to be some kind of problem that is presented. A problem that you are not familiar with, a problem that comes to you that requires you to think outside of your normal box, outside of your normal way of thinking about things. Let me tell you about your mind. Your mind is, 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 is trained to operate in the known areas. It, it's trained. And you can get into that. And it's it, it's it's not, you're not even aware that you become boring, my sister says, or you become normal, you just become regular. And and what happens is God by his spirit has to bring to us, Stacy, has to bring to us a problem a problem has to confront us with something difficult that 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 something has to be given to us in such a way that now we have to we have to depend on holy spirit we have to pull on holy spirit we have to make some demands of holy spirit because what has been presented to us what well, we don't we don't have an answer we don't have it. We can't go to the cabinet and pull out the familiar staples of our rigors, of our pedagogies. We we can't, it won't work with this. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. glory. And in this pandemic, uh, we have not necessarily had to use our mind. We haven't had to use our minds. <laughs> My God, I hear your Holy Spirit. And so a problem, a challenge has to confront us. Something has to move us so that we are no longer using what it is that we are familiar with, our tools. And I said this by the Spirit the sword of the spirit that has been given to each of us, the sword of the spirit. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the helmet of salvation. Thank you for the breastplate of righteousness. Thank you for all of those things. But understand that you have a weapon and it is the sword of the spirit. And it's easy to blame someone for the fact that your sword is dull. So what Holy, let me just tell you how Holy Spirit works. Holy Spirit works best in situations where we need his help. When we're on autopilot, we don't necessarily rely on Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit works his best work when we are confronted and with something bigger than us and we need to pull on Holy Spirit. Mm. Glory to God. And I must see. And you haven't had to use your mind two years. You haven't had to use your mind. No problem has been presented to you that was bigger than what you now know. And, and instead of us becoming lackadaisical and lazy in the pandemic, what we were supposed to be doing is sharpening ourselves and becoming activated and getting new skills and and gleaning, gleaning. Andy, many of you took it as a time off. You've checked out. 
You haven't read a book. You haven't picked up something fresh. You haven't done anything different. You haven't read something that was too hard to understand. You picked up the same books. You picked up the same kinds of things. And you haven't gotten yourself in a position that when the pandemic lifts, 23, 24, that when this pandemic lifts, when it is controlled, when it is controlled, you have not prepared yourself to do anything new. Glory to God. And you're just chilling in the palace. You're just, you're chilling at home online. You're chilling. Come on, somebody. You, you're chilling. You, you're at church, but you're really in your pajamas. You, you, you're not really in fully engaged. You're not really fully engage your habits, your, your normal habits, even when some of the, uh, the, the things lifted from the CDC, you went back to your normalcy. You went back. You didn't go forward. You go to the gym, but you've been going to the same gym. You went right back. You did not do anything different. You went back to the same job. You went back. You may not be in person yet, but nothing is, nothing is, is fresh. Nothing is fresh. Nothing is new. Watch this. Hear this, because this is not me. Nothing is scary. Nothing is scary. Uh, and I don't mean that in a in a in a in a bad way. I mean, but man, that scares me. <laughs> like, oh my God, like I'm scared. I, I mean, I got to do it, but I'm scared doing it. Nothing is that scares you like that. You because everything is manageable, everything is tolerable. Everything is normal. Everything is mundane. And you have not had to use your mind. Come on, Wanda. You have not had to use your mind. And, and you've been consumed with just normal. Normal is consuming you. Normal, regular is consuming you. And so you don't even realize that you become complacent. You don't even realize that. And, 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 and you don't even realize that there is something in this pandemic that should have empowered you. Yes, Leslie, that should have, have, have caused you to, you know, listen, let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit said, you got to do these camp meetings, you think I'm not scared? <laughs> listen, you think I'm not scared? What is a camp meeting in a pandemic? What, what does that look like? Where are the funds gonna come from? Where the, what's what? See, that's the kind of stuff that when you're presented with a problem, you're presented, you've got to pull on Holy Spirit. You've got to pull on the Holy Ghost. You've got to pull. Your spirit man has to be awakened. Your mind now has to be engaged because now you've got to pull on Holy Spirit to solve this problem. Good God Almighty, who am I talking to? And the Spirit of the Lord says that your mind, you haven't had to use your minds in at least two years. I'm not going before the pandemic. I'm just talking about since we, you haven't had to use your mind. Good God Almighty. <laughs> we talked about Daniel. We talked about Esther. What, what, what? What stirred, what stirred the spirit of God to give them, to give them these, these places in text in the canon? Problems. It was a problem. There was a problem in Babylon that required Daniel and his gifting. What was, the, what, what made Esther rise up? There was a problem. What made Joseph come up out of the, the bottom? What, what made, he had been down there for years. It was a problem. There was a problem. I'm saying this to us because I want us to get a different perspective of problems. That problems are not from the devil, but problems come from the Lord to stimulate our mind to create witty ideas. 
and to come up with innovations. Everything that we see, light bulbs, anything that you see, vehicles, anything that you see, what, what made it happen? A problem. A problem. Whoosh, get that up higher. Mordecai said, we got a problem. Come on now. Belshazzar, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, we got a problem. Pharaoh, we got a problem. <laughs> and God is not sending problems to consume you. But problems come to innovate you, to stimulate you. You got to hear this, Pastor Benina. You got to hear this, Dr. Martha. Listen, and, and so you don't come up with solutions if there's no problems. If nothing presents itself to you as a dilemma, as a challenge, as a problem, we have totally not understood Holy Spirit in our lives. We have totally not understood the Holy Spirit. We have totally minimized and marginalized Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit to just church, but not helping us to solve problems. God has problems and he gives these problems to us that we, God had a problem. When he created Adam, he had a problem. He, he, he created man to till the field. God created all of this stuff. He created it, but he didn't, he didn't have anyone to manage it. He didn't have anyone to grow it. God put it in the earth. Genesis chapter number one, Genesis chapter number two, Genesis chapter number three, says, but he created man because there was no one to till, to manage, to steward what it was that he had created. Oh God, and I'm to the bowls. Oh, come on here, Sister Frampton. Come on. You can't hide in the upper room. You got to come out. And so the pandemic has forced us to look at ourselves. I just hear this in the in, in the spirit, folks, I, I'm telling you, this was not my lesson for today, but I know it's the lesson of God. Hallelujah. You have not been thinking. You have not been thinking. You've not had to use your mind. And the gift of the Holy Spirit and all of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, healings, miracles, listen to me, discernment of spirit and faith. Guess what? They're all given to solve problems. Ah. Oh God, I hear you. Hallelujah. Books, yes, have to be written. Now, now manuals. Now, but you got to solve problems. If not, you'll never know what your exact contribution, gift, or skill set is. You won't know. You'll never know because you never solved a problem. You never, you looked at it, you prayed about it, but you didn't solve it. You didn't come up with remedies because you have to use your mind. Your mind has to be renewed. The spirit of your mind. When Mordecai brought that thing to Esther, at first she was like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But when she understood the gravity of the situation, my God, she went in, she said, y'all start fasting. I'm going to start fasting. I'm going to start praying. Why? Because there's a problem. There's a problem that I need to solve. There's a problem that you need to solve. What problem have you solved in the last two years? What problem have you, have you confronted and pulled on the Holy Spirit mentally to come up with a solution, a witty idea, an 
innovative concept. Oh, God has created you in the earth to solve for the purpose. The only reason you're alive is to solve problems. And the only way you can solve it is by the help of the Holy Spirit. And you'll never know what your exact contribution is. You'll never know what your gifting is. You'll never know what your skill set is. Oh, my God. You'll never know if you don't start perfecting it. And the only way you're going to perfect it is there has to be something bigger than you that gets in your way. Something that tries to block you, that tries to keep you normal. And you have to come up with a remedy. That's when you pull on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I want you to go to Mark chapter number 11. Mark chapter number 11. Holy Spirit, just drop this in my spirit for us. Glory to God. <laughs> the spirit of the living God is upon me. And he has anointed me to do something. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to do something and you quoted from 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 jesus but you have never written your own your own scripture there the spirit of the lord is upon me jesus says luke 4 and he has anointed me but what is the spirit of the lord upon you for you preach jesus sermon you preach jesus's testimony you preach what the spirit of the lord was upon jesus to do but what I hear the e flat has the spirit of the Lord come upon you to do? You preach what Jesus is anointed to do. But what are you anointed to do? You had never preached that sermon because you don't know. You ain't never had to think it through. You never had to be innovative. You didn't have to use your mind. <laughs> The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus said he has anointed me. What? To, to bring glad tidings, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to open up the prison doors, to set in liberty them that are bruised. My God, the, he knew, he knew, he knew what the spirit of the Lord, the problems that he had come to solve. And we preach that text. But we don't preach it from a personal place. We preach it from a Jesus place. Ah, Because you ain't never figured it out. You have never sat down with your mind. Hey, glory to God. Hiya. Hey, you've never sat down with your own mind and said, Holy Spirit, what am I anointed to do? You preach it from a Jesus place. You, you preach Jesus' sermon. You preach Jesus's testimony, but what is yours? What is your text? The spirit of the Lord is upon me to do what? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. My God, to do what? To do what? To do what? You may not set at liberty those that are bruised. You may not open the prison doors. You may not preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's Jesus's testimony. But what is the spirit upon you to do? You're here now. <laughs> What is the spirit of the Lord upon you to do? And it's got to be more than something spiritual. It's got to be more. Glory to God. I know that the spirit of the Lord is upon me to change the trajectory of public education. I know that. God need to share. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to impact the culture of education. The spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What, what is the spirit of the Lord upon you? You've been preaching the message of Jesus, and that's a wonderful thing to preach, but you've got to be able to personalize the text. You've got to personalize it. What is my place in the culture when I go from being a preacher to an influencer? Eh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to do what? To do what? To impact which mountain? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, yes, Yes, but Luke 4 is not your is not your testimony. Some of you preached it, and it's a good place to start. 
but sooner or later, your mind, you got to sit with your mind and you've got to carve out what the spirit of the Lord is upon you now to do. And you have not had to use your mind. That's what the Holy Ghost says. Luke, Mark chapter number four. Wait, y'all got me all messed up. Holy Ghost, I hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark chapter number 11. I want you to look at this, verse 22, from a different space. So Jesus answered, verse 22, and said to them, have faith in God. For I surely say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Now, I know we've all heard this, sir, we've heard that text and, and we know what that text is about. Uh, and that comes from a place of, of when uh, Jesus had cursed the fig tree. Uh, and, and if you, if you, you know, if you want to, to really, really read that, then just go back to Mark chapter number 11, Mark chapter number 11, but go back to verse 12. Now the next day, verse 12, when they had come out of Bethany, he was hungry, underline that in your Bible and seeing verse 13 from afar, a fig tree having leaves, he went to it. To see if perhaps he would find something on it. And he found nothing but leaves. Now, Luke adds this, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. I need you to hear this really good. What, what, why did he curse the fig tree? Why, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? I want you to think about this. Think about this. Why did, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? Why, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? And, and I was, I was, I was just, I was just in this and I was like, good God almighty. Do you realize, do you even know why? Why, 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 why did he curse the fig tree? We just preached up. We all try to figure it out. I want you to go back to this, verse 12. This is why he cursed the fig tree. And I know some of y'all gonna preach it and it's fine, but I want you to see it with different lenses. Why did he curse the fig tree? He cursed the fig tree because it did not solve a problem. What was the problem? Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Y'all didn't hear that. Woo, Hillary, somebody, somebody. Jesus was hungry. <laughs> Jesus was hungry. The problem that the fig tree was to solve was to feed Jesus. Good God Almighty. Woo! Shatana Masia. And all the fig tree had was leaves. My God. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Hungry. Come on, son. I see my, my preacher's son, Dr. Brock. Jesus was hungry. Listen, listen. You got to hear what I'm saying. The problem was Jesus was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Yeah, listen, that's what the Bible said. The next day, when he had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar having leaves, he went to the fig tree. Now, at that moment, 
whether it was in season or not, the fig tree should have produced. But the reason that it got cursed was it was not solving the problem. Listen to me, right? We're overseer, right? <laughs> Listen to me, folks. Jesus was hungry. He goes to the tree to get food. He has a problem. Jesus has a problem. And the tree should have solved his problem. What was his problem? He was hungry. And you don't, you don't see that often. You, know, you, you ain't going to find this in the text. You ain't going to see this often that Jesus is hungry. God is hungry. <laughs> you ain't going to see this. You're going to skim right over and say, oh, he just cursed the tree because the tree didn't bear fruit. No, 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 no. It wasn't that. The tree was doing fine not bearing fruit. Until Jesus got hungry. Whoa, shake her mama sia. Whoa, she turned in a sia. Whoa, it was all right as long as Jesus didn't get hungry. But the problem is that Jesus got hungry. And when he saw the fig tree, whether it was the season or not, and, and Luke, Mark adds that, whether it was the season or not, there was no, there was no solution for the hunger of Jesus. He can't eat the leaves. He can't eat the bark. And so if you're not going to feed me, guess what? You ain't going to feed nobody else. I got to get rid of you. I, mean, I, I, I got I to get rid of you. Shut up, my mercy. Oh, shit, come on, my sin. Glory to God. What was Jesus saying? I'm here now. I'm here now with a problem. I'm here now with a problem. And my problem is that I am hungry. And because, oh my God, uh, oh, come on. And because you can't solve my problem, you are useless. You can stand here and never bear fruit if you want. And never bear, never have a fig. It's all right until I get hungry. And if I get hungry and see you in the distance and that I know that you can produce what is needed to solve my problem, then you're useless. If you're useless to Jesus, then you're useless to everybody else. Y'all not gonna say that. Woo, shaka mama siya. Woo, shaka nana masia. Woo, glory, you got to understand that you are in the earth baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit to solve problems. You're useless. You can't solve my problem. You can't solve nobody else's problem. That's the text, folks. And that tree should have produced immediately. Immediately. It, that tree, as the moment Jesus reached up, the tree should have produced. But the tree was so used to not producing. See, we done got so used to not producing. We're using the Holy Spirit for all the wrong reasons. We're not using Holy Spirit to feed Jesus, to feed these mountains. We're not using Holy Spirit to move these mountains, to change the trajectory of these mountains. We're not using Holy Spirit. Don't I say it? And so we're deceptive. We're just like the tree. We're running all over everything, jumping and shouting, preaching and going on. And, and, and ain't got not a fig, no problems have been solved since you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. What problem are you solving now that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit? Notice what Jesus says. He says, because the disciples was like, uh-oh, you, you, you what? You done did what? He said, let me tell you something. He said, the same faith that I have, you have. So that if you come up on a problem, 
If you speak to a mountain, we've been talking about these mountains of culture. If you speak to that mountain and say, be removed, be changed, be, be, be transformed. If you speak to a mountain and you have faith to do it, then the mountain has to conform to whatever you say, the same way that the fig tree had to conform to what I said. We are using Holy Spirit for the wrong stuff. We're not allowing Holy Spirit to get into our minds. We're not pulling on Holy Spirit with our minds. We want to pull on Holy Spirit with our emotions. We never have a problem. We never have a problem we can't solve. We should never be consumed by the problem. We should be coming up with solutions. If you got a pain, you should be coming up with a solution to solve that pain. You know why? Because you're not the only person with that pain. If there is a need in your life, there's a problem with finances. There's a problem. Then you need to come up with an innovative and creative idea to create a stream of revenue because you're not the only person with that problem. If there is a problem, come on now, in relationships, speak to that mountain and use your mind, your Holy Spirit mind, and come up with a solution to solve that problem because you're not the only person with that problem. Problems are to provoke you to think. Problems are to provoke you to engage Holy Spirit at realms and dimensions that you never have. Y'all pray about problems, but you never solve problems. Holy Spirit is solution oriented. You want to pray about love? Y'all pray with me about this problem. I'm not praying with you. Use your mind. Use your mind. Use Holy Spirit. Ask Holy Spirit to use your mind. <laughs> this is, and we have used the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit wants to use us to solve the problem we call 9,000 people and we say y'all pray for me pray for me pray for me you said pray for you so that the problem can get solved or pray for you so that you can come up with a solution we have used Holy Spirit for all the wrong reasons. We have not used our minds, folks. Holy Spirit said you're not using your mind. You're not using your mind. In the era of Holy Spirit, you're not using your mind. You are complaining. You are grumbling. You are mad. You are angry. You are feeling defeated. You are acting as if the whole world is falling apart. And you are a born of God, spirit-filled, tongue-talking believer, and you offer no solutions. In the era of Holy Spirit. So this is what you're going to say. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Deal with me. Deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Whatever has me blocked, whatever has me lazy, whatever has me immobilized, whatever thought that I'm thinking that is a lie-based thought, Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Expand the modalities of how I engage the world. Expand my imagination. Expand my ability to solve problems. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, activate my mind. Holy Spirit, the power that raised Jesus from the dead. If you be in me, quicken my mortal mind. Give my body healing. I was listening to Joel Osteen. And pretty much if you get in my vehicle, that's pretty much all that you're going to hear. I just, I listen all day because he has the gift of exhortation, the gift of encouragement. And I can remember 40 years ago when his mom got sick with cancer. And he was telling this yesterday, he tells it often. 
His mom is still living. <laughs> Mother's doing fine. Dodie Osteen is doing fine. She 80 some years old, still doing ministry. Some of y'all get 80 about to die. So oh, I got to retire. I got to... No, don't retire. We're fine, baby. And, 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 and he was just talking about how sick she was and how she prayed and how her and the dad and the family prayed. And that day she said she believed she was healed. And at first it didn't look like she was healed. But as she began to walk in it, God gave her an innovative idea. I look at Betty Price. Dr. Betty Price was sick with cancer. And I remember when the Archbishop Ida Hosa flew to California, they called me from the house and we prayed for Betty Price. Betty Price just had her 80th birthday. We're not using Holy Spirit the way Holy Spirit wants to be used. We got this mindset in, in, our, in us that a problem is the devil, that the problem cannot be solved. But Holy Spirit if Holy Spirit uses your mind, uses your mind, everything you see was created by a human being's mind. And here we are with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and we never have a solution for anything. That changes today. In this class of Holy Spirit, that changes today. From this day forward, you will not complain. I want you to use your mind and I want you to understand the power of Holy Spirit to give your mind innovative ideas, concepts, witty inventions to solve problems. In Jesus' name, I got to go. <laughs> like, tag, and share. Make sure you put this everywhere. Imagine if a person would use their mind where the Holy Spirit would use their mind. There's no room for depression or oppression or trauma to set up a camp. I don't have time. I got to use my mind to solve problems. Ooh, 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 child. I got to go. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like, tag, and share it. My God, hashtag Pentecost in a pandemic, hashtag, and don't forget camp meeting. My God, oh my God, hallelujah.